Okay, welcome to the second part of Disasters in the 1300s. In this video, I'm going to quickly go through the bubonic plague and the Hundred Years of War. In the previous video, you learned about the Great Schism. Hopefully, you know it quite well. So we have bubonic plague one, the Hundred Years of War two. The other name for the bubonic plague is the Black Death, or just known as the plague. It's called the Black Death because people's limbs, arms, legs, things like that, turn black and rot off. Lovely. And the Hundred Years' War, which took place between France and England. Okay, so the Black Death appears to have originated around here in the Mongol Empire and got spread to Europe by the trade routes, okay? On the map, the red arrows indicate the way they traveled and the red dots are the major breakouts where the disease hit the most. The plague was spread by rats, not the rats themselves, it's actually the fleas here, you can see in the diagram, that were on the rats' backs that carried the disease and came to Europe. Now, if the people had actually known that this was the cause of the plague, Mm, they could have prevented it or at least minimized it. However, they didn't know and therefore the rats kept entering through the trade routes and it caused um, disaster. This is a lovely image of a medieval person suffering from the plague. You can see all the lumps and kind of sores all over his body. It was a terrible disease and it really broke families apart because they would often abandon people in their own family because it was so contagious or uh, catch the disease and die with them. So very sad, terrible thing to happen. Okay, so the consequences of the plague were many. Firstly, the population decreased. They estimate between two thirds or even three quarters of the population of Europe um, died. So huge population decrease. Obviously trade also decreased and the prices increased. The trade decreased because people had died, merchants had died and therefore there weren't as many people able to participate in the economy and as a result products are less available and therefore the prices are increased. Another terrible consequence is the perse persecution of Jews. Yet again the Jews are considered the ones responsible for the plague, they're blamed for it and they suffer as a result. And finally the other result is that serfs leave the countryside looking for more money, demanding more money, um, and end up revolting against the nobles. Oh, one more consequence quite important that I forgot, so I'm going to go back here, sorry, is that the church uh, loses power again. So you have it here, because people were praying, obviously, to God to stop the terrible disease, stop all the death, and it didn't happen, people started to doubt the church and their belief in God. Okay, so the Hundred Years' War also took place during the 1300s. It was between England and France. They were fighting over who would be king of France because when the last king in the Capetian dynasty died, the French Capetian dynasty died, Edward III of England decided he should be king of France and the war broke out. The wars continued over a period of time between 1337 until 1453. There wasn't constant war. It was just on and off, back and forth, with different uh, winners throughout. So France gaining territory, England gaining territory, and vice versa. Um, one of the very important things used during this war, which helped um, change the style of battle immensely, was the longbow, a new weapon that the English had which allowed them to win many battles. Here you can see an image of the longbow. Um, it was a weapon that was very cheap to make, it was very fast to use, um, and it was deadly. It would also pierce through the armor, and so the English used this in a number of battles to great success. So here is a map showing the different stages of the Hundred Years' War. Um, as you can't see the legend very well, the orange is showing what France controls and the green is what England controls. So you can see um, how things change over time. And ultimately France wins the war, except for a small place called Calais, which the English keep. Okay, in 1453. Okay, there are three main battles where the English used the longbow to great success. They're called the Battle of Cressy, the Battle of Agincourt, and the Battle of Poitiers. 
Okay, and the last important uh, thing about the Hundred Years' War that I want you to know is Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was a young teenage girl from France. She said that God visited her and told her that she needed to help France win against England to prevent a treaty being signed, which meant that uh, France would be ruled by an English king in the future. So she helped France win the war, and Charles the seventh became king. However, after she brought him success by fighting, like as a warrior with the men, um, she was captured and burnt at the stake in 1431. Uh, okay, and Charles the seventh didn't try and help her. We think that he probably could have, but he didn't. Okay, so what were the consequences of the Hundred Years' War? Well, firstly, nationalism increased. This is when you feel very patriotic and loyal to your country. Increased in both England and in France. Secondly, the king became like a hero figure. Especially in France, because they won the war against England. And well, in France, another civil war broke out for the throne called the War of the Roses, so England was not very settled. All in all, the three disasters of the Great Schism, the Bubonic Plague and the Hundred Years' War weakened Europe greatly. However, it ultimately strengthened the rule of the monarchs. Um, population increased and there was a shift from feudal, the feudal system to a king-based system and the cities became the central focus once again.